Hello and welcome to my crafting channel. I'm Alana from Upcycling NZ. I've been to the beach and I collected all these pebbles for their size and for their shape. I want to turn these into strawberries. I'm giving each of these a really good clean with a wet wipe so that I don't get any grit in my paint. When they've dried I'm just taking a pencil and I'm going to mark some leaves at the top of each rock. Sorry that they're hard to see but they're kind of shaped a bit like petals. I'm using an exterior acrylic paint. I buy these in pots and I decant them into these containers so that I have a lid on them and they're easy to squeeze out. I'll take a green and a blue and I'm going to mix these to make a dark green. I buy yellow, red, blue, white and black in paint and then I mix all of the other colours to go in my squeezy bottles. I'll take a fine paintbrush. I'm using exterior paint so that you can put these outside in the garden. Apparently if you put them in your strawberry patch, when the birds come down to raid your strawberries, if they pick on these, it acts as a deterrent. But I think they just look gorgeous in your garden. I'm just rounding off the leaves close to the back of the rock. Depending on the colour you're using and the paint coverage, you can get away with one coat like I have for the green. Once the green paint's dry, I'll take a red acrylic exterior paint. It's a lovely vibrant colour and as close to strawberry red as I could get. I'm painting the face of my strawberries. When that's dry, I'll turn them over and do the back as well. So I've completed the red on both sides now and I'm just going to do a second coat and I'm not going to be too fussy about it. Uh, you'll see that where the paint is a bit thin it gets a darker red colour about it. So I'm allowing a little bit of that variation to show through. So again allow that to dry and then I'll take a black exterior paint and I'm going to use a super fine paintbrush this time. And then I'm just applying little elongated dots to the face of each of my strawberries and I'm narrowing them as I get closer to the bottom. And to make these seeds really pop on the front of the strawberry I'm going to use a little bit of white exterior paint along with a dash of orange exterior paint and I'm going to repeat those dots right over top of the black ones but smaller so that the black shows like a shadow behind it. Now if you don't have a super fine paintbrush you could use a skewer stick for this. These are fine just as they are but I'm going to add a little bit of black and green and add a tiny bit of contrast to those leaves. So I'm just putting random lines on the sides of the leaves and taking the opportunity to clean up any bleeding that happened between the green and the red paint. And now my gorgeous little strawberries are done. For the next little craft project I've got this flax bush in the garden and I've taken some leaves. You get different varieties here in New Zealand of flax. 
This one's a variegated variety, so it's got that lovely light yellow all the way down the edge. They're quite a big plant. Using my thumbnail, I'm going to separate the leaves down the centre and pull it down towards the woody part at the bottom, which will be my starting point. Then I'm going to run my thumbnail up the leaves and create four strands on either side. You can use a knife or scissors for this. I'm just blessed with very strong fingernails, so I use them like a tool. Now that I have my eight strands, I'm going to take the one on the right hand side and I'm going to fold that under the one next to it and weave it in and out of the other strands. And I'm pressing down to crease that bend. Then I'll take the next one and do the same thing, alternating, putting the weave in the other direction. Continue doing this until you're left with the last strand. Then turn your work and run that last strand backwards against itself. And you can start again and you're starting to create a circle around the top of your piece of flax. I've reached the last strand again and I'm going to weave that back upon itself but now that those flax strands are hanging downwards I'm going to leave the very last one closest to the spine out and that'll be hanging at the back of the piece. I'll continue this process until my narrowest strand of flax is about 10 centimetres long. So now that I have that narrow piece of flax, I'm going to weave it through one more time and then I'm going to leave the end of it out of the weaving and continue on as I was before, weaving the rest of the flax. That'll leave me about five centimetres on that tiny, thin piece of flax. And I'll continue on weaving with the rest of these strands. So New Zealand flax is called harakiki in Māori and we use it to weave baskets, uh, to weave bags, we call those kite. And in thermal areas of New Zealand where we have bubbling hot pools, which are a natural occurrence in places like Rotorua here in New Zealand, the Māori would lower their food in these kite baskets and cook it in the boiling water. I am of Māori descent on my dad's side. Uh, may you rest in peace up there, Dad. Love you. And my mum was born in London. So now I've reached a point where all my ends are roughly about 10 centimetres. And I'm going to twist them. And I'm going to use that last little 5 centimetre piece that I kept to tie a knot around the centre. I'm tying it to the other narrowest strand that came from the other side. Now I'll turn my piece over and you'll see that extra strand I left hanging out at the back. From the front I'm going to grab the centre piece and I'm going to twist it and continue to twist it to give my flax flower some shape. You can twist it as much or as little as you like. Then I'm going to trim the end of the piece that I had hanging at the back and I'm going to thread it close to the centre through the weave and then line it up with the next weave above it and then again with the weave I want it to go through at the top and that will lock the twist into the flower. I'm twisting the very top again to ensure that that gets locked in tight. And now your end should have ended up in the centre with the other loose ends. So I'm just going to start to tie that on, twist it around and around, locking all of those pieces together, all of your loose ends. 
and then knot it off again. And then the end will become part of your stamen on your flower. And at this point you can manipulate your flower slightly, giving it more shape. You can use these green and floral arrangements, or you can allow them to dry out and the weave will open as it dries. This one's only halfway dry at the moment. It'll get yellower like this one that a student from work gifted me. It's a different style of flower. Uh, he's a bit more talented at this than I am. Um, and it's a beautiful curved lily. With the style of flower I made, you could actually make them on the plant and they would stay greener for longer. Can you imagine this plant with flowers all around it? Thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel. Love having you here. I'll leave you with a few beautiful shots of New Zealand.